Right. Okay, so um, uh, for for the, my fellow Singaporeans, right, I'm going to um, try because what I realized was if I just speak normal Singaporean like this, right, most Caucasians they know what the fuck I'm talking about. So I'm gonna at least slang a little bit so at least Mark Sergeant right here can understand at least what I'm talking about. Most of the time when I speak like Singaporean, right, they just give me the blank stare and ah yeah yeah just. <laughs> So uh, my fellow Singaporeans, in the future, those who are interested, don't think I'm trying to um, uh, change the way I thought. I'm just trying to make it uh, a very uh, um, connected conversation flow. So, so uh, like I was saying off air, uh, today we have Mark Sargent. Um, I'm just a guy that's looking for information because I'm not sure um, Mark, how much you know about Singapore, but we, it's an oligarchy. Um, they say we have free speech here, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm, <laughs> you know, we have... It's it's tough, lah. So I I'm not sure what's the best way to uh, introduce you, um, other than just to let you go ahead with it because I I've tried looking for clips and I couldn't do it. So oh no no that's fine. I I am a flat Earth theorist. How's that? Uh, I am the I am the flat Earth recruiter, the freshman recruiter. If flat Earth was a university. I would be the guy you run into first because it's the easiest to understand. Um, that's not me being arrogant in any way, shape or form. I've heard this many, many, many times, which is um, if you go to university, you have the first year you get 101 books. I am 101. You're going, there's a high degree of probability you're gonna run through my series of stuff uh, first. So I got into the, the whole flutter thing back in 2015. Uh, I started in 20 researching in 2014 and in 2015 just gave up and decided to make a series of videos and put it out on YouTube called Flat Earth Clues, which basically was my theory. It's like, okay, here's what I think the world is and what it is not. And, and I can't prove this and I can't prove this, but man, I'm connecting all sorts of dots. And then I put out all my contact information, my name, my phone number, my email address, my physical address, everything. And I said, it's still out there now. And I said, Academics come at me and tell me where I went wrong. And instead of the academics coming at me, the media came at me and all sorts of people and subject matter experts and my channel kept growing and then other channels popped up and this thing started getting bigger and bigger. Then we, were, we had the first conference ever in 500 years uh, in the United States on the, on the subject. And then, I mean, just kept growing to where, I mean, here we are now, um, six years later. And I have done some wonderfully fun things with uh, with Flat Earth. So yeah, that's what I do. I, it, it took me about four months to to really, I don't know what's the word, man. Like, I'm not sure coming out of closet is the, the word, but I reconsider everything. I, I really review everything I really learned. Um, the very first time I heard it, like, uh, I sent you the email, right? I mean, I've come across a lot of weird shit. I mean, you know, the big names in, yeah, I mean, lizard people and, and, and Charlie thing. I'm sure that's, that still holds some merit. But when I come across uh, Flat Earth, right, the very first thing I, I came up with, like, I just <laughs> close it. Like, these stupid people are just going to get a fucking life, like, you know? And then, and then because all, uh, the, the, the way they presented the evidence, right, the very first one I saw, very vividly remember was this lady, she, was, she went to the pilot's cabin and she just panned a camera around and she asked the pilot, so it's, a, it's flat. And then the pilot's like, <laughs> that's it and then it's just ended the video so i didn't really get a very good uh, perspective yeah. on, on him so that that was the quality of evidence i was getting so from yeah. then on uh, i formed my opinions around that and just started to to build the whole flat earth thing around it but yeah the, the very first one that really hit me in the face right uh was uh, your good friend david weiss it's just back to back facts back to back and the one that really got me was was the the, the flight flight path I'm not sure how anyone can can refute that. I'm not sure how anyone can refute seeing too far. Um, I'm definitely sure that we are. It's the Earth is not as small and round as they, they say it is. Yeah. And most likely it's flat. And I guess that's it. And yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is a tough. I mean, I was more stubborn than most. It took me nine months. And I and granted, I did not have much material to work with. I mean, Eric had a few things out there. Matt Boylan had a few things out there. 
um, Jay Henning Caligia from uh, from Germany. He had some stuff out there, but it was it was really really tough. And again, because you were shown the globe when you were a child, and it stays in the classroom for all of your schooling, even if you don't go to university, it's with you. I mean, that's a, the amazing reinforcement. And here's the thing that caught me was when I clicked on my very first flat earth video, I was physically embarrassed <laughs> to click on it. I actually got, I actually got flushed and I'm going, okay, wait a minute. I, uh, you know, I'm in my forties then uh, I'm in a, in a house alone with the drapes pulled and I'm getting embarrassed. Come on. I've been on the internet. I've seen some freaky stuff out there, right? Nothing shocked me. Right? It's like, oh yeah, it's the internet. There's a lot of weird stuff out there, but this did. This I'm going, wait, why am I, I caught myself. It's like, why am I, I mean, I actually got a hot flash. I was going, what, what the hell's wrong with me? And then as I'm getting into it, I was like, oh, right. Because you, you were taught this so many times. It's an affront, it's an affront, it's an offense to your sensibilities. And, uh, and so, I mean, and, and I was stubborn, I'm extremely stubborn and I just dug in and I hammered on this thing for months and months and months. And then finally, I just woke up again, three o'clock in the morning uh, in 2015 and just said, okay, I'm going to go the other way. The, the, the scales had tipped. I'm going to go the other way and I'm going to see how much pushback I get. And it was amazing, uh, you know, the amount of people and the, and the amount of stuff. And again, people, uh, the clues that I made were just connecting the dots. And it was, I didn't even come up with the experiments that people came up with. You know, like, like people going on planes with levels or shooting lasers or doing long distance photography. None of that's in the clues whatsoever. And in fact, I had people calling me. It's like, oh yeah, we're going to go to the beach and do experiments. I go, why the hell are you going to the beach? It's like, cause it's absolutely flat, man. We're going to shoot long distance photography. And I'm going, what? Wait, that's a thing. And it's like, yeah, water's perfectly level, man. It's tabletop flat. I go, really? Really? It's tabletop flat. And, and so these videos started pouring in and people started, I mean, you know, Jaren's channel was Billy Globebusters was doing his thing. Uh, Patricia, uh, David Weiss, you know, it, there were so many people there was like channel, 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 channel. And we were trending so hard that YouTube, we became a binge topic on, uh, on YouTube, you know, YouTube makes money off of binge topics and we were promoted for three years straight. I mean, promoted, like recommended for you. Oh my God. I've got a video on my channel where this guy actually comes on and he says, he goes, I need to know how I can get things not recommended for me anymore. Right. And he goes like this flat earth thing. I just keep saying, no, no, no. It keeps coming back. And it was, he was absolutely right. I mean, people were typing in like tractor maintenance. Here's four flat earth videos for you. Potato salad recipes. Here's three more flat earth videos for you. It didn't matter. We were just constantly getting recommended for people. And yeah, we just got to the where uh, eventually the United States government got involved, which was just amazing to me. You know, they, they, did, they did a special session where they, they called uh, three topics, right? They were talking about fake news, right? And they're trying to curb it in the United States. And they said, okay, three things we're going after. Snake oil, which is, you know, any, anything that cures you, you know, like fake medicine, basically. Okay, okay. Um, which is known over here as snake oil. Um, basically cancer cures. Because cause, cause we've had it forever, basically. We've been selling fake medicine for a long time. Um, false flags, you know, any, anything that's a false flag attack, a pretend attack on something. And flat earth. That, that was, those were the three topics they went All after. Things. The what? All things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then um, Google came out and they said, okay, we will ban... Uh, fake men. Oh shit! Connection, man. connection. Oh fuck! Double connection. Okay, be right back. Okay, now you're back. Uh oh. Yeah, you. Uh, now you're back. Okay, uh, so you're saying you uh, snake oil and whatnot, and then they start banning what? Oh yeah, they they were they banned they banned fake medicine, they banned false flags, but they wouldn't ban flat Earth. 
they said they'd recommend us less. And yeah, monetization wise, we were hit hard. I mean, 60 to 70% cut right off the bat to where we were not recommended much on the right hand side. Now they didn't delete us, but they weren't going to recommend us as much. And they really didn't have to. I mean, we had, we were, we had trended so hard that there was nothing left for us to prove other than, you know, the, the conferences and stuff like that. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. So do you, is it because um, back then the YouTube algorithm wasn't as refined? So whatever that's trending, they just put it out there, but they didn't really QC in a way and, and think that it was a serious topic to look into? Or? Well, no, I think we were we had saturated the market and they didn't need to back. OK, there's a couple things. I've got a theory on this because what I try to remind people of, and it's in the book where there used to be, if you went to YouTube, and it's in every search engine since the beginning of search engines, you type in a topic and it says search results equals a number, right? You know, you can you can find out what, what topics are out there and there's entire programs dedicated to this. And the same thing with YouTube. You'd, in fact, if you typed in flat earth into YouTube in the beginning of 2015, it would say search results equals 50,000. And that included all videos, all references to videos and mirrors and all the other stuff. And we just go, start going leaps and bounds to where at the end of like 2017, we were at 14 million, 15 million. And then at in the summer of 2018, we capped out at 20.9 million. And that's a lot. That's relevant search results. That's a ridiculous amount. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, I joked because I thought it was going to take us until Christmas of 2018 to catch Donald Trump. Because he was at 20.8. And we did it within, I think, like four weeks. And I remember I made a video. It's still out there now. A date and timestamp said, Flat Earth catches the president of the United States. Right? And just a few weeks after that, I had a friend call me up. And they said, yeah, the, the scoreboard's, scoreboard's gone. And I go, you mean our numbers are stunted? The filter's screwed up? What do you mean? And it's like, no, it's gone. I go, what do you mean? He goes, search results equals. It's not there anymore. And it's still true to this day. You can type any topic into YouTube and, and search results is gone. No. And so, and some people say, well, you're delusional if you think that flat earth had something to do with it. I go, the hell we're delusional. <laughs> we were the only ones that were paying attention to that number. In fact, um, there was only, once we, once we got past uh, uh, the president of the United States, there was only a few people ahead of us. You know, people like Katy Perry and Taylor Swift and uh, Justin Bieber, people like that. Those are the only people that were ahead of us, and there were not many. And uh, and so we had bugged, we had, we had basically ruffled some feathers. Now, again, why they weren't killing us off outright, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Uh, it's, it's almost like they're letting us out there on purpose. They could have stunted us. Let, let's put it this way. If they wanted to, they could have shut us down early. Yeah. really early it doesn't take a genius to figure that out all you have to do is say never recommend flat earth ever <laughs> on the right hand side and never fill in the google search bar with flat earth never ever do that i mean like if it was to the point where uh you type in earth into google and it would fill in is flat It'd be the number one thing it would fill in because there were so many people searching for it and so, yeah, we, we, that after that, we were, we were like, our, our enthusiasm wasn't curbed that much because we were still doing conferences and still doing other media things. But that was, it was an amazing, amazing to see it because you don't see those sort of moves from the other side of the, the chessboard that quickly and that harshly. And so I was like, all right, cool, wonderful. You know, I, apparently we're getting somebody's attention. Uh, and I, and I totally got it by the way, you know, cause I'm, I'm a big nerd and, uh, I, I understood the nerd meeting. Imagine this at YouTube, right? Yeah. You're trying to figure out, okay, how can we curb the enthusiasm of these guys? Right. Well, what sort of algorithm can we change? Do we, do we like multiply it by 0.7? What sort of sliding scale do we use? And then you have some mucky muck at the end, the head nerd just come up with something ridiculous. He goes, you know what? Why do we have to have it there at all? Well, and then like, what, the search results? It's always been there. It's been there ever since we had YouTube. It's like, yeah, but do we have to have it? And then that's it. It's like, yeah, get rid of it. 
And that was it. And they just killed it. And in fact, I've never seen a news story on it. I've never seen a video on it. Nobody, it's like everyone just, just completely glossed over because had they left it and said like search results equals zero or search results equals nothing, that the, I think a lot of people would have noticed. But once it was not there anymore, people just thought, well, it's got to, people immediately thought, well, it's got to be somewhere else in the software. It's got, it's got to be somewhere. It's got to be in the metric somewhere. And so it's like, oh, maybe it's buried in the in the personal metric. No, no, it's it was gone. It was anyway. So. Your answer. So I just because I have two screens, right? I just uh, took your suggestion and I searched uh, very uh, specifically flat Earth, and I think I know why they kind of um, let let you guys build momentum because the very first thing I fucking got was flat Earth society. <laughs> oh yeah 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 well well here that was the other thing by the way where if you once we got up to a certain point i mean just about i challenge most people now because it's been a few years every giant channel in youtube did a flat earth video that's how good it got i mean when when pute i mean you could type it type in here you want to have fun type in pewdiepie flat earth show, show you what comes up uh, people actually believe that it's flat. <laughs> yeah, you see the see the thumbnail. It's the worst picture ever. Yeah, Wor worst picture ever. It's like it's like I didn't and and PewDiePie is a troll, mind you. Right? I don't. I his numbers are completely inflated, but it's the same time he did it. And in, in every major channel, every major network did a story on it. Uh, but, but the point is, by the way, you can type in any words up you want in the search in the search bar. You can type in. Um, uh, new televisions or gaming system or whatever, and there is no search results. I mean, meaning, oh yeah, you'll see videos, but you won't see any numbers tied to it. Yeah, I, was, uh, I, I used to get like a few millions on there. Now I see nothing. We, we just, just yeah, yeah, it's it's wild, but uh, I get it. I totally get it. Why they did it? I mean, we were too. It, it, it what I try to tell people is say, well, they're censoring us. It's like no, they weren't censoring us. They weren't they weren't hitting the brakes. They were just taking their foot off the gas. And there's a big difference. And you know, we, people would complain, and I would say, you know, it's like, look, is is, is ODD's channel there? Is is uh, Jaren's channel there? Is all these people's channels there? Yes. Now some of these guys got in trouble because they posted other things. Because now in the United States, you still can't like false flags. They don't joke around that. So if there's a shooting for example, you can't make a video anymore saying, I don't believe in that shooting. I think it's fake. I think it's a, a production. You can't say that in the States anymore. As soon as you do, it, you're, you're on a time limit. It's, it's someone will find it. You, the algorithm will find it or someone will turn you in and it's gone. That that's it. So, you know, but, but again, flat earth, we're still, still doing it, which is good, I guess for yeah, now. Really scary. Um, what I find really disturbing as well right, is this, the, this, the censorship, not just censorship from um, the people on top, so to speak, but censorship from our fellow people as well. It, it's, it, it's almost as if a badge of honor to, to rag your neighbor out. Yeah. Right? It's, well, I mean, think, it's think about it. It's, it's the, the old saying, it's way easier to destroy than to create. And there are trolls, dedicated trolls that just get off on making people either feel bad or they want to burn down their channel or make them cry. And they, you know, there's, I mean, we have dedicated channels. All they do is, is say horrible things about flat earth every single week, which is great. You know, for, for me, I know other people hate them so much, but you guys like, look, they improve the metrics. Yeah. You know, at YouTube, I have had producers. There's one thing I have learned over the last six years, which is producers will tell you straight up, they go, it doesn't matter if they love or they hate a topic as long as they're looking at the topic, as long as they're engaged in the topic. In fact, we get more, we sometimes we get better results and better numbers if they hate it. And, you know, I've, I've had, um, uh, I remember this radio station uh, I, was, I was doing an interview thing with, and it was called Change My Mind, where they had callers call in and they're trying to change my mind and the whole flat earth thing, right? And after I hung up, the, uh, the, the, the producer gets on the line and they go, hey, just so you know, you had a whole bunch of people that were on board with flat earth that, uh, that, that wanted to talk to you. And I go, yeah, you didn't let any of them through. It's like, no, that's boring. Why would we let them through? That's not a show. It's like, oh, and and same thing um, with one of uh, Eminem's radio stations out in Detroit. 
that we had I had people calling in. Oh my God. They were so angry, swearing at me, yelling at me. And I, I get off and the producer comes on. It's like, Oh, I'm so glad you didn't hang up. And I go, why? It's like, are you kidding? That was one of our best shows ever. <laughs> it's like never seen, you know, because you love you. you there's a, a term out there. You love to hate them. It's kind of like, um, if you remember the older movies, uh, uh, we used to have movies here on Saturdays where kids, only kids would go Saturday morning movies and the villain would come on the screen. You'd go, boo, you throw stuff at the screen because you hated the villains so much. The villain's always more interesting than the hero. And flat earth is the villain of all conspiracy theories, which is why we get other, you know, other conspiracy groups that hate us like nine 11 people hate hate us because they think we're taking away from 9-11 or or the illuminati or uh, big brother or it, it, any conspiracy you can think people just they go after flat earth it's like you're making you're making the other conspiracies look bad you're making conspiracies look crazy and i go you know they already think we're crazy right it's the part of being conspiracy uh, yeah we're a little over the top but at least we're positive anyway go ahead What's the uh, strongest proof uh, or reasoning that you ever got against uh, the flat earth model? Is, is there against? one? Yeah, against it. Oh, model. yeah. Uh, no, that's easy. The, the strongest one, and amazed that more people don't bring it up uh, because it's, it's very tough to do, um, is the Antarctic sun, 24 hours of the Antarctic sun. Uh, in our model, you can't have 24 hours of Antarctic sun unless you really play with the light source. And unless there's multiple light sources or overlapping light sources, something else is happening on the, the outer rim that's not happening on the inner rim. But the reason why most people don't bring it up is that nobody goes to Antarctica. I mean, there's so very few people in the world that ever, ever, ever go to Antarctica or even know people that have gone to Antarctica that it just never comes up in conversation. I mean, I literally, I've done, we'll just rough, rough ballpark it, maybe 450 interviews. And out of those, maybe 10 even brought it up at all. And it wasn't even one of those, and they should have brought it up right away. It's like, you know, that I can't resolve that. No, I can't resolve it. But I don't really care because one, nobody goes to Antarctica. And two, as far as plot holes, you know, you know, problems with the story, the globe has way more holes in it than the flat earth model. That's, that's what usually helps us. It's like, it's like, fine. There's a couple things in flat earth that don't make sense. There's a whole bunch of stuff on the globe that don't make sense. And it's all visual and we can show people rapid fire. So when people try to come after us with, um, with, with whatever they got for flat earth, in fact, most of the time, when they come at us, they come at us with obvious stuff that we just punt right back to them, like gravity. It's like, oh, I explain gravity, or um, you know, some some long distance photography shots that they took, or you can't see the other shoreline, and it's obvious that you know that everything's bending. It's like you know it wouldn't bend that far, or or they will lean. The the the, the most instinctive one that people jump to is NASA. Anything in the space program. It's like, look, here's a live shot from the ISS. Look, here's some shots from the moon. Here's, it's like, or, or inside the ISS. It's like, oh, stop, stop. We've already destroyed NASA. We, in fact, I, I usually kill them with one photograph, which I, I, I send out. In fact, here, I'll, I'll put it in your thing, thing real quick while you're thinking. I, about it. I emailed NASA recently, and I also emailed Singapore Space Society Organization or something. I was asking them, I was asking them uh, where the photographs of, of uh, not images or pictures, but where are the photographs are? and so far, you know, no reply. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, so I just, I'm dumping a shot in there. My video is going to screw up while it's doing it. Um, so that, that shot, by the way, which I just dumped in your thing, that's from Apollo 12. And that's a shot I use and I used all of 2019 as a speech. I look, that's date and time stamped. And it's a beautiful shot, Be you know, high res, zoom in, wonderful shot. Um, the problem is the more you stare at it, the worse it gets. Because if you know anything about uh, different disciplines of science, the whole thing goes to hell. Um, I'll give you th three real fast. And I'm not going to, I'm not even going to point out the uh, no stars in the background because everyone's just going to say exposure anyway. So fine. I don't care. I don't need the stars in the background. Um, 
one would be uh, if there's one light source, one very, very far away light source, the sun at 90 million miles, then all those shadows should be running parallel. They should never intersect. Oh, that's a problem because we got four shadows there and they are going to intersect eventually. So how is that remotely possible? No one will touch it. When was this um, taken again? This was Apollo 12, 1969. 1969, okay. And it's date stamped on the bottom. This is straight out of NASA. This, it looks this, like this. made of aluminum foil and copper wires. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. If you zoom in on, yeah, the capsule looks like it was made by a, a homeless person that was on meth. Um, there's, there's footprints all over the place, by the way. Not lovely footprints on these perfect three-inch deep ash, which no one ever wants to question. It's like, didn't anyone take a shovel and dig and see how far down that ash went? Because apparently it's just three inches everywhere, right? And th so there's footprints everywhere, but there's no blast crater underneath the engine, underneath the capsule. Well, yeah. so how, how's that possible? There should be this monstrous splay pattern. This monstrous, this should be a burn crater around that thing. Nothing. Uh, that dish, that pretty, pretty dish there, that's a VHF transmitter running off a car battery. That thing is a, I mean, it's not classified in any way, shape or form from 1969. It has maybe a range of 50 miles, maybe on a good day. And that's Morse code. I mean, it's should be transmitting no data. We didn't even have 1200 baud modems when this thing came out. Right, and that thing's pumping out ten frames of color video a second and perfect two-way communication. And the, I've had arguments. It's like, okay, you're either hit, going at two things: you're either pointing at the Earth and getting perfect communication, or you're pointing at the rendezvous capsule, which is in orbit, which means you're also you're pointing at a, even a faster moving target. What are you tracking with? How that dish doesn't have a motor on it; it's not moving. That's stationary. That's straight up. That is photography 101. It is it is brilliant. It's a wonderful shot. It's an iconic shot. It makes no sense at all. That and what last but not least, uh, the spacesuit. The guy, you know, because there's only two astronauts on the ground, one supposedly in orbit of the moon, which again, it's just ridiculous. Uh, that spacesuit, uh, it should be in a vacuum, remember, because it's vacuum supposedly on the moon. Okay, what, what, why isn't that space to turn into a, a basketball? Why isn't it just inflate, inflate, and finally just burst? Because any saw, and you can look up anything on the internet, anything in a vacuum, right? Football, basketball, soccer ball, uh, toys, anything that's soft will just expand and blow up. So why doesn't the space suit? What is in that backpack that stops the vacuum of space? No one will tell me. No one has an answer. Uh, and it's like, okay, and, and, and it was in 1969 on top of it. There's, it, it defies thermodynamics. Thermodynamics says pressure cannot exist to, next to non-pressure without a barrier. And it's got to be a hard barrier, which is why, uh, you know, uh, submarines are so thick. And what, why the space station? Why is that made out of aluminum and plastic? Uh, well, hell, I'll give, you, I'll give you one more. You want to see the power of vacuum? I'll give you the power of vacuum. Watch this and the other one that's more um uh, confusing is okay they, they, they did live call with nixon right so where's the lag time between the conversation oh yeah, yeah, yeah. what the yeah, fuck absolutely there should I mean, be i play video games love but <laughs> what the fucking yeah, lag? There, there should be there should be yeah the, yeah two-way perfect two-way communication yeah. they never had a breakdown so here watch this video it's not even 15 seconds ready so you know that's what? that's that's applying a vacuum field to the inside it's not even a pure vacuum to the inside of a steel mm -hmm. rail car, not aluminum, steel. Watch how fast Ooh. it goes down. Yeah, I know, right? That's how fast a vacuum works. Meaning every movie you ever saw where they said, oh, there's a hole, there's a hole in our spaceship. We've only got two minutes of air left. That is crap. It's painful, man. It, you, you are dead instantly. Absolutely. And by the way, that's what happens to a submarine if it's not thick enough when it gets down at crush depth. So, any, so, so the question is, if that's a steel rail car, so how is the ISS not just exploding up there? And, and people have no answer. People's like, and I've had people come back at me and say, well, it's because there actually is pressure at that altitude. And it's like, no, no, you've already said it's the vacuum of space. You can't go back and, and change it now. It's the vacuum. And but but people don't understand the power of the it's instant. It's like so you remember the movie Aliens with Sigourney Weaver? Yeah. Yeah. Remember the end of that where she opens up the airlock and she's climbing up the ladder and things are flying up? No, no, no. She opens up that airlock, she's dead, the girl's dead, the guy's dead, the alien's dead. They're all dead in a fraction of a second. It is over. That movie is over. And but again, for dramatic license, Hollywood has has just screwed everybody up. 
because they think, oh, when we, you know, vacuum, we still have time. It's like, no, you have no time. There's no time. It's over. So yeah. You or or one more thing. Here, here's okay. You want? I, let me give you my strongest argument. Uh, David doesn't use this very much. My my strongest argument against um, the globe isn't long distance photography, even though most people use it. It's the, it's the vacuum, which is okay. So you are you're sitting where you are, and let's say the room above you is a vacuum chamber, right? And you pull the valve. No, you've seen the train. You know what happens. It's not going to be fun. <laughs> All the air in your room is going upstairs, right? It's going to be instant. It's going to be violent. You're going to hopefully be tied down to your chair because otherwise you're going up there with it. So the question is, when you go outside, why is that atmosphere that you're breathing in still here? And, and everyone's initial knee-jerk response, because this is what we were taught in school, is, well, it's gravity. I go, oh, okay. You mean the same gravity that couldn't hold the air in your room? The exact same gravity can't hold the air in your room from going upstairs is holding everything on out there. And, and then they pause and I've gotten this whole horrible pause and they don't know what to do. And I go, I go, I'll, I'll do you one better. What happens when our atmosphere meets space, right? With that bleeding edge, I go, what happens there? I go, what? Yeah. I, and and they and I've had I had a girl from um, Toronto University recently say that well, it's because there's so few particles that it's just not pulling that hard. And I go, okay, here's the deal. That would be true if it was all just small particles, but it's not. Behind those small particles is dense and dense and dense and dense all the way down to the surface. I, it's like the vacuum doesn't discriminate. The vacuum doesn't care. It's going after everything. And so I, I, so I came up with a, with a cool little analogy. Think of a cardboard box with a little piece of tape on the bottom. You fill it with pa packing popcorn, you pick it up. Everything's fine. Packing popcorn, you know, box, really great. Put the box back down, put a couple pieces of paper on top of the packing popcorn, put bricks on it. Now try to pick up that box. What happens? The bricks just push right through the packing popcorn and pop, pile at the bottom. That's the atmosphere in space. The, the vacuum of space is not going to just pick up the little particles. It's going after everything, everything all the way to the freaking ground. Anything that isn't nailed down, it's going to grab. And, and it's like, what's the point? Well, my point is, why doesn't it? And people just keep, well, it's gravity. I go, yeah, you remember your room, how you died in your room because you suffocated because you popped the valve. Remember that? Yeah. It, it, and, and people get mad. Hey, look, that's just the way it is. I go, the... And they, they go, there can't be any other explanation. I go, unless it's a pressurized system, unless you're living in a big box, live big building, you know, atmosphere, atmospheric pressure, pressurized system. And I mean, I mean, I come back and I said, look, I didn't write the law of thermodynamics. You did. It was you guys that came up with the law of thermodynamics. Now you want to just break it? You know, I say, no, 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 it doesn't apply for this. I was like, come on. This one I saw recently uh, was the one that you did with... Um the university students, I think you were referring to that just now, uh, where a few of them built, right? A few what? Built, a few, you, you did an interview with uh, some girl and some guy. I think both oh, of them yeah, were yeah, PhD yeah. students. Yeah, Toronto, they, were, they were PhD, brand new PhD students. She was astrophysics no, reasonable. and very calm was and... fluid dynamics. Yeah. No, and, no, by the, and by one. the way, two of them, two, there were supposed to be four of them, and two of them couldn't even do it. Two of them was like, no, no, not, not going to do it, because it was so... It, it, it offended them so much they could not bring themselves to sit down because they just you gotta remember i feel bad in some ways because you gotta remember at that point they had spent oh god a hundred thousand us at least on their education years i mean you're, you're and you know what i'm gonna come back and say you're asking them to throw that away voluntarily they have no choice but to fight against me they have no choice and i feel bad because i don't really like talking to people that young uh, when, when it comes to that, because the only thing they know is textbooks. That's it. They've just been living and breathing textbooks. They were giving me answers straight off of tests. I, I mean, I could hear it. It was like, oh, you guys are killing me. I, I was listening to all the uh, rebuttals, right? And everything felt like you were just reading them of something that they, they're memorizing and just reading of what they were taught, yeah. not something experiential. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and again, I, I didn't expect any different. I know the audience, you know, some of the people that, that were listening, they wanted me to come at them, you know, and, and really dig in. It's like, come on, they're just, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're kids, they're kids. I, I, can't, I can't yell at them. They just finished school. 
you know they, they're really full i mean and which is why i said during the thing it's like hey i'm just glad you guys were even open enough to put me on and i know they were doing it for ratings you know they were doing it it's like you know we want to show our physics yeah. friends it's like look we're willing to talk to these people but uh, i mean they they didn't have answers for stuff and and now i mean i i knew i was in the girl's head and it's like she's going to be thinking about this stuff and it's going to be you know it's going to be you rattling around life yeah, well, hopefully not. I mean, I, but at the same time, I'll, I'll give you another one. Um, I had a chance to go up against one of our astronauts, um, Terry Verts, on a British television show. I don't know his name. And uh, Piers Morgan, of all people, he says, he asked me, he goes, he goes, um, he goes, are you calling Terry, you know, this astronaut, your, your countryman, you calling him a liar? And I know, I know they were trying to pick a fight. He was like, yeah, I'm calling him a liar. Damn you. No, no, I said, no, no, not at all. I go, you got to remember, though, He's a colonel, a full bird colonel in the United States military. You know, he's he's an Air Force colonel. He's a soldier. What do you think he's going to say? He's not going to say, yeah, yeah, it's flat. Yeah, he's not going to say that. <laughs> he's going to follow orders. You don't make colonel unless you know how to follow orders. I go, look, he, he's doing what he's told, and he's under a different set of rules than we are. Uh, if we break the rules, we go to court, right, pay some fine, you know. But if they break the rules, it's called treason, <laughs> And that's a whole, that's a whole nother thing you don't want to be a part of. So anyway, but yeah, the kids, the kids were fine and we'll see, you know, the kids are scheduled. They're supposed to talk to David this month. We'll see if they do because David will, will show them no mercy. He will, he will just torture them. It will be, I, I predict it will be the last interview they ever do because he will just come at them and come at them and, and basically challenge their education and say, look, you guys are learning bullshit <laughs> it's like because you guys have been teaching been taught the wrong thing he's going to go after the degrees he's going to go after the university and go after not personally but you know, they it's ask something for it. that has to be addressed because we're building everything else in society and civilization off those those things basically uh where do we live on we don't even fucking know the house that we live in yeah well okay there's a there was a wonderful quote by nikola tesla and because he knew what was going on in the world of science. And he said that the big problem is that every scientist builds on only the previous work of the guy before him. They never look back at the foundation. So like the foundation of thermodynamics and the foundation of physics, no one revisits those. They just build on, on one guy. They stand on the shoulders of each other. He goes, the problem is when you reach a certain point, like nine, 10, 15 guys up, you've made so many assumptions that he goes the equations are basically meaningless you know you're you're just you're just babbling at that point you 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 can't prove any of it because it is so hypothetical uh which is why we've got people that are that are spending their entire lives right now like trying to explain dark matter it's like yeah there's guys in phds that are they're doing dark matter and it's like it's completely a theory and which is i put put to the girl and and she said like, but but they are believe it because it's her, her words. There has to be dark matter. It's got to be they, because we, we, we need it to make it. The other things fit. And it's like, yeah, yeah. And they themselves don't see it when they say it in, in, in that way, they say it has to be, but I think what they really mean is we, we believe it because this is what we thought and it makes sense, but we haven't really considered does it really exist or not? Right. Well, here, let me, let me give the line. And I was so glad, by the way, that they, um, that they took on Neil Tyson. You know, I love bringing him up to guys like that because like, you know, they were there, you know, they're basically saying that we, we don't idolize Neil Tyson. It's like, I don't care. The media does. Yeah. So when Neil Tyson does something like this, you know, with this fun little statement, let me see if I can drag this in there. Uh, I so oh, I got the phone. That that foot that that shot right there, where Neil says the good thing about science is it's true whether or not you believe in it. One of the most arrogant things I've ever heard in my life. Next to, of course, uh, the famous Kanye quote, where Kanye says that my only regret is I never got to see myself live on stage. Oh, but but Neil Tyson was was along those lines. Where where science. Basically, what he was, he worded it wrong. What he should have said is, is, is that science is the authority and it's right until we update it. <laughs> and then that's the new right. And it, and it, he's, he's true. I mean, he's right in saying that, in that science says, this is what it is, not what we believe. This is what it is. And then all of a sudden they're wrong. It's like, 
this is now what it is. <laughs> it's like, I like oh. how you have uh, Kanye's meme, even though he has nothing to do with Flat Earth. Oh yeah, no, I put that in a in a thing. <laughs> I, I put that in a speech I did in 2019 yeah. because yeah. it's true. I mean, it 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 is that arrogant. You know, Kanye is very arrogant, but but how much different is Neil's? I mean, Neil's saying is, is science doesn't matter if you believe in it. Science is true. It's like, yeah, that's not right. Which is why I bring up the, the famous fish. Um, the very first know, time I had an inkling that uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, something wrong, something fishy with him, right, was the, the one he went on with Joe Rogan. And he was explaining in a way where he's performing. And I was like, I mean, you can just say it as it is. Or why do you have to like come up with all these crazy performances just to come up with scientific fact? That's why I felt something was a bit off. Well, I, I, will, I will give Neil this, though. Neil helped us in when he gave that little speech uh and i've got i've got it posted on my channel uh it's a challenge where because i've had so many people come at me and say that they've seen the curvature from an airplane and a balloon and even from the beach they say i ever i had so many people say oh so many people have said i have they, they in fact they've come back at me and it's like haven't you ever been on an airplane because you could see a curve from an airplane and it's like no you can't here's why and neil tyson has that wonderful quote where he's on stage and he's making fun, thank God for Neil sometimes, he, he was making fun of the Red Bull jump, where, you know, the, the Red Bull Felix Bumgarner Gardner jump. And he was saying that was scientifically dishonest because the, they were only at 130,000 feet. And this showed this severe curvature. I mean, absolutely severe. The, the curvature you wouldn't even see unless you were at 400 miles or so. And he, he, when I, he said, he goes, no, he goes, he goes, you cannot see the curvature from that height at 130,000 feet. You absolutely cannot see it. He goes, that stuff is flat. It's like brilliant. Absolutely a brilliant quote. Um, and I use it as many times as I can. And I throw it at people and I say, okay, so you saw the curvature four times lower than, than that. So is Neil's wrong. Neil's wrong when he says it. Neil says you can't see it from 130,000 feet, but you say you saw it from a plane at cruising altitude at 30,000 feet. He, and so Neil's wrong. And, and most people will back down. They'll, they'll just be like, well, you're stupid. And they'll walk away. Um, or they will come back. I've had some people say, well, Neil, Neil could be wrong. It's like, really? Because he's the most famous scientist in the world right now. So and unless you're going to challenge that and say that you've got something up on him, I don't think you should be saying that. And which is, you know, I throw it at, at people all the time. It still, by the way, blows me away that there's only three media scientists in the whole world. Right now that are recognizable. There's Neil Tyson from the United States, Brian Cox from the UK, and Michio Kaku from Japan. That's it. Those are the only three guys that are ever on television. Yes, the occasional Bill Nye appearance, which is duh, which is horrible because he's got a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, which he abandoned immediately to take up acting. I know this because he, he worked for a Seattle comedy troupe in my town, Seattle. I mean, he was on local television weekdays and then just got amazingly lucky because one of his um, his producers said, hey, you know what? If you wear a lab coat and do geeky science stuff, that might be kind of cool. And he did a couple segments for this local show and Disney caught it. They're like, yeah, he's not swearing. It's safe content. Well, yeah, let's let's make it a, a show on Disney. Yeah, if you do the then. And, and then he was syndicated on Disney and people grew up with him. And now he does, he's on panels for Mars rovers and quantum physics. And all this, he's at the White House with freaking Obama. And it's like, what the hell? He's, he's not a scientist. And it's, oh, anyway, kills me. Just kills me. They don't even question his, his um, achievements, his uh, academic qualifications. No, I mean, well, 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 yeah, that's just it. Well, he, and here's the thing. Power, hang on, I'm sending you just random shots. That's Brian Cox, by the way, if you don't know. Who You're flooding my, my computer with flat of stuff, man. No, 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 what's no. <laughs> Brian Cox? Oh, by the way, that fish that I sent you, that's that's one of my, the science things I throw at people. That's the coelacanth fish, right? It's been extinct for, for 70 million years, right? 70 million years, right? Yeah, I don't really get the fish thing. Like, is it spo what's supposed to, to prove in? Yeah, well, well, it's it's not dead. It's not even it's not even remotely extinct. It's it's live. That's that's a National Geographic scuba person swimming around with it right there. Not that not that long ago, it was found in 1938 by um by British uh, by the British Navy. So they were really really wrong. And Ooh. it's like, what's your point? My point is, is every scientist in the world would have bet the freaking farm that that fish was extinct. 
It's like, well, we got the fossil records. We got the carbon dating. It's obviously extinct. And it's like, no, it's not. Here it is. And then they had to backtrack on that and they had to make up stuff. And it's like, well, it's a, it's in an evolutionary state of stasis and it's a living fossil. And it's like, they were just making up stuff at that point. So yeah, science is, my, my alternative to Neil Tyson is, is that science is right until it's not. <laughs> Meaning, you know, they're they're right, uh, you know, because they until they're proven wrong, they're just going to stand their ground and say that they're right, especially with animals, by the way. Um, the, every major animal that was late in discovery was a myth and science wouldn't acknowledge it. The giant panda was a myth. <laughs> it's like, doesn't exist. The giant anaconda, Total myth doesn't exist. The giant squid, which we still have never caught one of the big ones because you just can't catch it. Our best subs can't catch these damn things, right? We I only saw read pictures of the giant squids. The what? I thought I saw uh, several pictures of giant squids in. Oh yeah, well the, they found the, the it, luckily they've got a predator, the the sperm whales. So they found the beaks of these damn things when you know in when they were we were whale hunting. We open up the stomachs of the of the sperm whales. We find these beaks, and it's like, holy smokes, what the hell, sort of? And and they extrapolated from that, so they know they exist, even though you know. But until they found the sperm whale stuff, nope, total myth. Huh. So yeah, same like right now, like the lot. So so okay, here's my here's my argument, right? So the fish, right, extinct for seventy million years, and, but but no, it's swimming around Madagascar and Africa. It's all over the place, right? So my argument is this. When people say the Loch Ness monster is a total myth, right? It's it's total. It's a total myth. I go, you mean a dinosaur swimming around in a lake somewhere in the UK? That's a myth. Why? Well, because it's obviously been extinct for at least a hundred million years. I go, yeah, that fish right there. Yeah, you said that about the fish. So is it possible there could be a plesiosaur swimming around Loch Ness? Possibly. But you know, you you know, until we catch one, you're gonna treat it like that, like the damn fish, and, and you you bet. I mean, once because it, they don't want to find it. Trust me on this one, because if they find it, they have to relook. Because remember that fish, even though it's from the dinosaur era, you know, if you actually catch a plesiosaur, you know, Loch Ness monster type thing, you'd be like, okay, how the hell these things, have these things been swimming around for the last hundred million years? Had, you know, what is the carbon dating system? You know, is there, is there, in fact, is our world dating system completely off? Very, very possible. Anyway, sorry, I ramble. Please stop me. Yeah, I just want to chime in that here in Singapore, we, men, I mean, we have conscription, right? And there's a very famous saying that goes something like, um, you, eh, you say, I, eh, what was it? I, yeah, you say, I assume who confirmed. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the line from the Truman show is very, very, um, very, very accurate, which is people believe the world that is presented to them. Why, why wouldn't they? We don't like to think that we are being lied to. We don't, uh, especially as kids, you know, we, we believe what parents tell us. We believe what authority tells. Us. I mean, I was one of the, the prime examples of that where I didn't believe that the authority would even lie. <laughs> I was really naive growing up. And, and then I saw in 1992, I believe, um, JFK in the theater, you know, the movie from Oliver Stone. And it's like, holy smokes, that was a big eye opener for me because that was before the internet. And it's like, wait, people in the government lie about things? <laughs> I honestly didn't know. I mean, it's like, why would they? They've got a moral obligation to the general public. And it's like, wait, they could lie about this. What else could they lie about? And then I, you know, started going down, you know, luckily, luckily for me, the internet was fairly new. So there was only certain rabbit holes, but we had 9-11 and, and, and other stuff that was going on. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's people believe, in, in fact, over here in, in the States, we still, to this day, the, the problem is, is that the news for the most part is mostly true. Meaning the news will tell you about a crash on the freeway. They'll tell you if a tornado is coming to your state and they'll tell you who won the Oscars at the last Academy Awards, right? That's all true, right? The narration, so, the narration is questionable. Well, yeah, but if they start slipping in other stuff, how do you know? How do you, you know, you don't question the other things. And so we have at least half of our country, at least half of our country believes that whatever is on the news is absolutely accurate. And then, and so then when people come at me and especially it's fun nowadays, cause they'll say, there's no such thing as fake news. 
I go, oh, okay, no such thing as fake news, right? Um, all right, resolve these two sentences. Everything on CNN is absolutely true. And everything on Fox News is absolutely true. See, depending on what side, whether you're, you know, red team or blue team over here, you can't, you can't do both of those. You can't because you swear that the other guy's lying. So, yeah, I mean, look, we all know that there are conspiracies and lies in just about every aspect of our, of our lives, it does business and politics and sports and entertainment. And yeah, even science and journalism, even all these things. The, the difference is between you, for example, and people that are walking around the street is people walking on the street have a very small room to work with. You know, they, their, their comfort zone is very small. They don't like to look at any, any, unless it's media sanctioned, and that's straight out of 1984, unless the media endorses it, and media won't even use the word conspiracy. They'll use the word scandal unless somebody dies and then it's a tragedy. Everything outside of that is a fringe conspiracy theory. And a lot of people just don't like thinking outside their comfort zones. And, and that's fine. I get it. You know, some people close their eyes at scary movies, but you know, it's what's out there. And the more, you know, uh, you know, what's the line from the matrix still very true, which is ignorance is bliss. And, you know, if he, if what people don't know won't hurt them in a lot of cases, but sometimes it will hurt them. They just don't know it yet. I mean, coming back to the Truman Show, right, I think we can um, talk about the firmament because I'm, I'm not sure if it really ends at Antar Antarctica. It could be just an, an infinite ceiling, right? Oh, sure. Be possible? Sure, sure, sure. Oh, no. I mean, it could go on for a long, long ways. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's tons of maps out there. And I'm not going to discount that. What, the only thing I tell people is like, oh, yeah, there could be other lands out there. We don't have access to them right now. I, I do believe the barrier is there and, and truth can be told, come on, wouldn't you put a barrier in if you start people, people say, okay, are in movies have talked about this science fiction novels and movies have talked about this forever, which is okay. Are human beings, a box of kittens that should be protected. Are we a box of scorpions that should never, ever be let out ever. <laughs> and come on, even, even our early science fiction movies, like the day the earth stood still the first one. That was that was their premise, which was, yeah, you guys are freaking savages. <laughs> you should never be allowed to leave this world ever. And how how have we ever shown them wrong? So uh, do I think there's other worlds out there or other other lands? Yeah, you bet, you bet I do. Um, I mean the the ships that are I think they're remnants of old civilizations that are flying around. I've seen them with night vision binoculars. The only question is, are they trapped in here with us? Or can they come and go? Not really sure. I mean, there might be some that can come and go. Uh, but the only thing I know for, for certain is that they can't interact with us on a general public sense. Meaning <clears throat> people have said, well, you know, why don't they just land <clears throat> in main, you know, the, 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 the center of a city and come out and say, hello, you know, take pictures and shake hands and take some selfies. And uh, the reason is because it would have too much of an impact uh, on people. It would make too much of a lasting impression. And, uh, it, you know, that's straight out of Star Trek, the prime directive. You know, religions would form immediately. If, if, um, if somebody, can, if a ship landed, like, let's say in Singapore, right? A giant golden ship landed and people came out. You'd have two groups of people that would, that would look at this. You'd have the nerds. That would be like, oh, wow, they do look like the blue people from Avatar. Or you would have the other people, they would be like, it's the giant blue people. We must build a church for the giant blue people. And, the, you know, these two factions would be at odds with each other. But that's how, that's how it works. Um, so anyway, the, so the remnants of our, sub, whoever was here first, whoever was here before us, and those group before us, they, uh, there's rules. There's rules. They don't. They don't get to. Um, uh, they don't get to deal with us on a, the surface on a regular. In fact. Um, oh God, I wonder if I still have that. Look up the here. closest evidence I ever got to to um, checking out any stories like that was uh, John Levy, uh, John Levi. He is he's putting out very very good content on Tartaria and 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 uh, very recent uh, civilizations. Sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So, I mean, I mean, I have so many questions about the human condition. 
this this um, I mean, why why the inclusion? I mean, the, the, the creepiest one I've ever come across, right, was uh, Bill Nye saying, you know, I, what I want your generation to embrace is the um, the possibility that we are in an enclosed system and we can't get out. It's, it's fucking creepy, man. I mean, the way he says it. Oh, I know. I, I know. So I know. He knows what the hell's going on. It's it. It's a great. It's one of those. I think that every civilization has their time uh, to figure it out. You know, our unbroken history goes back unbroken, goes back maybe five thousand years, and then after that, you talk. You you have ruins that predate us by huge leaps and bounds. You know, everything from um, the sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India, um, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, uh, Puma Punku, just about every place they ever visited in ancient aliens. Um, but until the technology reaches a certain point, you're never going to discover what this place is. And really, I, I mean, I wasn't kidding, you know, up until 1960, we didn't know anything. We, we, we had maps and we, I think we had secret maps, but until we had the internal combustion engine and pressurized airplanes, we couldn't really figure things out. We, we just didn't know. And so now, you know, and then 1960, it's like, okay, we figured out the, well, 1926, we figured the, the center of, of it out. And then it took us another 40 years to figure out the outer marker, at least the part that we thought we could get through. And I don't think we can. And then after that, it's like, you know, if you, again, the, the, the line which I throw at people, I'll throw it at you too, is it's going to be tough for you because it predates you a lot. Um, if you found out in 1960 that the world was, a snow globe would you tell people and your initial reaction would be like yeah yeah well, you know if you're a journalist you'd be like oh damn right the people have a right to know and then then you sit down and, you, and with your friends and you're like well wait a minute <laughs> this might not be so good and, and because again think about illuminati meeting right you know dark scary room long table people's like oh what's okay well, what's the ramifications right it's like well um, all universities would be in utter chaos for at least 10 or 20 years. We'd have to burn down physical sciences. Libraries would have to be emptied and refilled. That would take a while. World markets would have to be suspended for months because we don't know what it means, the ramifications of that. And every major religious house in the world would have leverage against science forever. That's the shortest meeting ever. You know, it's like, what's the worst that could happen? And then this rattles off. And it's like, yeah, we're not telling anyone for a while right? until we can figure this out, until we can figure out an infrastructure to let people know. You could, yeah, and I, I'm, I'm the first, look, I'm a conspiracy guy. I'm the first one to tell you. 1960, no, terrible idea. Really, really bad idea. You don't want to tell people. I mean, look how, look how well, if you know anything about this, um, how well the Roswell thing happened. In 1947, right? And that was just a stupid ship that crashed in the desert, right? That thing crashes. People lost their freaking minds. I mean, the, the headlines were just going, I mean, everywhere. It was, and that was newspaper television wasn't even a thing. It was just it, newspapers and radio were losing it until the Pentagon's like, yeah, it's weather balloon. Totally weather balloon. Yep. Nope. <laughs> nothing, there, nothing there at all. Nope. And that was it. And they could cover that up fast. In 1947, they could have covered it up. Nowadays, you couldn't have, you couldn't have walked that back. So in 1960, when this thing is discovered, it's like, yeah, we can't tell people this. We, because they couldn't control the flow of information. They couldn't control the narrative. Now they can, which is why I think it's, it's coming out. One of the reasons why we haven't been, you know, why I'm still alive is because this thing, I think they're letting us do this to open up minds for something else. I've always thought, always, you can check my interviews going back forever, which is that Flat Earth is just the, the, the frame for a canvas that we haven't seen yet. The, there's something else coming. And, and maybe that's another civilization. Maybe it's the existence of, you know, of everything. Who, who knows what the hell it is? But I think that flat earth is one of those polarizing ideas that opens minds up to everything else. Don't forget that anyone that gets into flat earth, <laughs> one of the side effects is that you revisit every other conspiracy that you were curious about. Everybody does. I mean, once they get into flat Earth, it's like it's like, yeah, maybe I should look up that 9/11 stuff again. Maybe I should look up Pearl Harbor, every major major American war, or I don't know everything. You know, they people don't discount. I mean, even me, I, I've been the first one to tell people. It's like, look, beforehand, if you would have if you would have come to me and said, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know a guy 
who knows for a fact that Elvis had Bigfoot's baby. Okay? And I'd be, I'd be like, hey, no, six years ago, I'd be like, get the hell out of here, right? And, and but now I'd be like, yeah, you know what? I got a couple minutes. What do you got? You, you know, give it to me. You know, give me, give me what you, what you, what you think. But at the same time here, I'll give you another quick one. Um, it was in the very first paragraph of the Flat Earth Clues, which is, I know people to this day, or at least back then I did, they're, they don't talk to me now, <laughs> where they, um, they're convinced that the, the UK royal family are made out of lizard people, right? It's lizard people, right? Which is fine. It's totally fine, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. What about this flat earth stuff? And they're like, get the hell out of here. What are we talking about? Flat earth versus lizard people? You can tell me. So lizard, right? You understand. That's the that's how strong flat earth just trumps all of it. They 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 don't know what to do. They don't know, know what to make of it. Anyway. So yeah, like I was telling you, the moment I came across this thing, I had to at least consider that the earth was flat, right? Which goes against everything I ever knew. Everything, I mean, all other conspiracies just just fall. I mean, they don't seem as important anymore. And I just got to look at this thing like, I me, mean, it just it just flies on the face of, of everything. That every, everything else has to be considered, but yet it's not not as important as as, as the, the the. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're absolutely right. I mean, I've had people, I've had other people interview people who have said, "Hey, can we talk about other conspiracies?" I'm going, well, I'll talk about it, but it's they're way down the list now. I mean, I, yeah, I used to be a big 9-11 guy, right? Not anymore. And it's like, yeah, yeah, 9-11, whatever. <laughs> it's like, you know, false flags. Like, I go, because it's so physically small. I go, I go don't forget that the, the whole flat earth model is a giant umbrella to which everything else is underneath it, literally underneath it. And so it's like, you, you want to talk about a school shooting as a conspiracy? It's like, it's, it's just, you know, I'm not trying to belittle death. It's like, yeah. yeah. The body count there, that's nothing to compare what we're talking about. We're talking about trillions of adjusted dollars and a scope of, of different organizations that are involved and the secrecy. I mean, the fact that you could spend the money and lock down an entire continent. <laughs> now, granted, it's snowy and no one wants to go there anyway. But the fact that you could lock down a continent, that's like locking down Africa. It's like, yeah, no one should ever go to Africa. I was like, why not? Yeah, we're not going to talk about it. It's like what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Either. I mean, it's it's huge. It's 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 such a cool, and the and the reason I I think the reason why we haven't been shut down. One of the one of the big reasons is it's got a positive aspect to it. Meaning, it's got a message of hope. You know, you're you, it's not you're not an accident flying through space. You've got a purpose. It's deliberate. It was built. And fine, if you don't believe in whatever God it is, at the very least, it's a higher power than you. It may not be God, but it's one step closer to having God's phone number than you are. I mean, it's, it's at least that far. And th which is why we have a lot of women in the community. I mean, the conspiracy world is dominated by men. It's usually 85 to 90% men, generally. Flat Earth, it's barely even 70 percent men really? i mean i've oh yeah i mean i've the every meetup every conference there are husbands and wives that go there are single women that go that, i mean because it doesn't have there's no sinister aspect to it maybe with other conspiracies i don't care what you're talking about 9-11 or sandy hook or boston bombing or, or pearl harbor or whatever it is it's you know people are talking in hushed tones and everything is really whispering it's you know black hats and you expect you know guy you know you, you're talking about guys that twirl their handlebar mustaches and you know it's like <laughs> we're gonna take over the world <laughs> no it flat earth is very innocent compared to that i mean we you know because the the big thing is it's one of the few conspiracies that we didn't build we had nothing to do with it um it's the great line you remember the movie contact with jodie yeah, foster from years ago? such a great line in that where she asked them did you did you make this this transport system and it, matter of fact they said we didn't build it we don't know who did <laughs> it's like it was just here when we got here that's what what we're, we're running into um it's not that the u.s government built this and it had nothing to do with this they just figured it out in 1960 and they were just trying to keep it a secret from everybody else you know it's like finding some monolith in the desert <laughs> it's like that's the most amazing thing ever 
yeah hide this thing that and but imagine that on a much much bigger scale and that's what we're talking about here so b because of that it's um it takes away a layer of of that human um uh sinister aspect you know you you know you don't since we didn't come up with the horrible things and because it's not really a horrible thing it's just how the world was built and what it is and they they are trying to keep it a secret uh, part, part of me thinks they're trying to keep it a secret that, you know people say well they have to gain right and i've heard that many times like what what would the illuminati we'll just say it's the illuminati right who cares i don't i don't care what name you want but if it's you know what would the illuminati have to gain from it like, it's not what they have to gain it's what they have to lose I like, go. you remember by the time by 1960 everything had already been built Right? The, the civilization had pretty much been built. We, we had skyscrapers, we had jet airplanes, we had television, the internet was you know, slowly but surely getting ramped up. It's really at life, you know, we still had cars. Civilization had already been established. So do you want to risk that? No, they're not going to risk that. I mean, it's like, whoa, we could, you know, if there's even a 5% chance that people are going to run through the street with torches and pitchforks and just burn it all down, they're not going to take that chance. So they're just going to say, yeah, we're just going to keep this a secret. As little people as know as possible, let's just lock this baby down. And under the guise of national security, it's only money. It's only time. And we're lucky because it's a cold, miserable place out there. So no one's going out there anyway. It'll be fine. It'll work. I mean, and how, how long? I mean, okay, this, this whole thing, right, reminds me yeah. of back then when I was employed um, by a, a certain company. And just to get sales, right? They would do fucking anything. They just lie and say, "Oh no, you gotta, you gotta trade with us. You know, you have to do yeah. this, do this." Just, just yeah. to sell. But how long? Okay. But what I noticed, right, was what, what's, what's strange, right? It's after a, a few. I mean, I, I, I do personal trading at least. I'm still am a little bit anyway. So after a certain number of sessions, right, you should be able to see results. And there were so many of them, right, who do not see results. And it, it's just strange to me how how they date themselves. I mean, I can obviously see that they don't see results. So after one, two years, right, they don't even come up with their own question saying right. something like, okay, so where are we now? I mean, I mean, I'm not seeing much difference. And then the sales guy, he'll say something, oh no, it's because of this. Because it's the same exact fucking thing. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. how long can this lie go on for? It, okay, if they don't fix, if they don't come clean now at least, right, they just come up with another lie, another lie, another, it just keep yeah. going excessively and go on forever. I mean, how can people not see that? I don't see how. Uh, it, people don't, again, people don't, don't like to believe in lies. And when it comes to like this one, <sighs> What it, that was, by the way, one of the big tells for me, which was this world is based on greed and money and power. We lie about everything, especially, by the way, in the States. Americans, I am still to this day stunned that in the, in the United States, yeah, I get it. Americans went to the moon, right? Rah, rah, wave the flag. We're the greatest. Outside of the United States, why the hell does everyone believe the Americans? And you don't want to know why? Because it was on television. I have heard this so many times. It's like, yeah, the moon was on television. It's got to be true. It's like, what? What? But, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, people lie about everything. And they, and they can, can, well, hell, how many? Let, let me give you a quick long-term lie. You ready? Um, and this, this one will be great. Lance Armstrong, <laughs> right? World-famous cyclist, right? Wait, you know, did testicular cancer, took freaking roids, you know, yeah. PEDs. Just got jacked up, winning title after freaking title, won for seven years straight, right? Just blowing away the Tour de France, right? Everybody knew he was lying. Everybody knew he was jacked up. They couldn't prove it. They couldn't prove it. And every day, you know, every every race on the camera is like, yeah, everything's just fine. No, I'm not doping. <laughs> and he said this every single time. And then finally, one of his dope guys decides he wants to blackmail him, and the whole thing falls apart. And he, and he comes on, to, or, um, Lance comes on TV, and he goes. Yeah, I was lying the entire time. <laughs> what? And they stripped him of all his titles, and then he runs up writing another book. But he's disgraced. I mean, he can't go anywhere in the cycling world. Now, but the point is, you can lie, and you can keep things a secret for a long time if you can. Or, or if, it's, if it's possible. You, it can be done. Um, in the government, definitely possible. Uh, especially with something like this, because you only have to have a very few people know. It's not like people's, that's one of the arguments because like, well, there's so many people that have to know. I like, no, 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 no. This is, this is compartmentalization. This is a need to know basis situation, um, which is why I've referenced Capricorn one, the, the movie about the fake Mars mission. 
which is just brilliant because people forget in that movie because there was all these other things going on that just a handful of guys knew in all of NASA that the Mars mission was fake in that movie. In fact, the only guys that really knew were, tele were telemetry guys, the guys that, that come up with the numbers to say, okay, once it's out of visual range, here are its coordinates. Well, you can say anything you want, right? Because it's out of visual range. You can say, oh, yeah, it's over here. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, how do I know? Well, my computer said so. It's like, uh-huh. And the, the whole premise, there was, a, there was a scary part in the movie where a junior telemetry guy ran his own program and he, and he took it to the supervisor and he goes, yeah, these numbers don't make any damn sense. He goes, you know, he goes, I, he goes, and the second I, he was in a bar with a reporter and, and he's going, yeah, he was just rattling through his head. He goes, he goes, it doesn't make any sense. Why would the transmission for, for the, the Mars lander be only 70 miles away? Right. You know, because it was being beamed from an Air Force base right off in the desert. And the second he said that, his his friend who went to the bar to get a drink, he comes back to the pool table. That guy's gone. You never see him again. <laughs> That's what you I mean. The, the, there's a line in a movie. It's like the government, when they decide to keep a secret, like they'll lock you in a room and they'll for, throw away the room. Right. You You don't see anything ever, ever again. So... Anyway, sorry. I think it's an, an open secret. Like, um, I think he, the, the best way, right, would be to release the Lance Armstrong thing because, okay, I think I think he once said something like it's an open secret because it is true, exactly in the whole this whole fitness industry. Like for me, I, I mean, I mean, when you're in the industry, when you're in the soup, right, you, you find uh, others who are doing the same thing. So, what's going on now, right? is that everyone, I mean, 80, 90% of the people posting jacked up, shredded pictures, yeah. right? Most of them on stories and they don't see anything and they're yeah. selling that image. So, yeah. and it's almost as if it's an open secret, but if we don't say it, um, those clients, those people who are not in the soup want, want to employ and list their services. If they don't say they're on stories, they don't know and it's okay. I mean, it's, it's an open secret to, to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, 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 our, in the US, by the way, you know, we have three major sports. We have um, American football, we have basketball, and we have baseball. Um, American football, or well, let's, let's go back to the, the first one. Basketball, you can't use steroids because it gives you too much muscle mass and you can't jump as high. So on the steroids, steroids on the don't do anything for basketball players. In fact, they hurt them. They can't run as fast. They're just really strong, but it's like the basketball is about speed and, and being light. Um, baseball, they tried, guys tried to do it and they were jacking the balls. Just, I mean, just, just cranking the balls out of the park. And finally in the end, they're like, yeah, we can't keep doing this because they're breaking records. Right. You know, because the park, because it couldn't make the park any bigger. So I was like, yeah, this home run shit. Yeah, we got to get rid of that. So they were coming down on people. And then now, so it's out of baseball. But in football, there was nothing they could do. They, uh, in fact, they, 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 because once every, because it started in college and once it got into the pros. So we got, what we did was, like you said, we just don't talk about it. It's like all the linemen, every lineman, you're not even worth your, your, your Monsters, anything man. unless, unless you're over 300 pounds. Yeah. Right. And, but they don't talk about it back in the day, not that long ago, they used to list the names and weights of the players, you know, and it's like, Oh yeah. They, but not anymore. They don't. Once they realize that these guys just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so, yeah, every once in a while, kind of like the, the obligatory drug bust, you know, with cocaine, you know, like get a ship here, get a plane there. It's like, Oh yeah, they'll nail a linebacker here. You know, everyone's like, Oh, he's on performance drugs. He's out for three weeks. Or it's like, no, they're all on them. All the, the whole NFL is on them. And the, yeah, we don't talk about it because, well, it's, it's, huh, I hate to say this. It's, it's better. Well, it was before. Well, it's better for the game in that the players run faster. They jump higher. Well, they, they, they they're better athletes. However, there's more injuries. The injuries are brutal and it burns them out. It's like putting um, uh, jet fuel into an engine, into a car engine. You know, it burns them out faster. And so their careers aren't as long, but, uh, but yeah, we don't talk about it. It's the just, problem, yeah. The, the only problem I have with, with steroids, it's not the, it's not the process and results, but what you gain from it, because what I realized, because back, back then I used to compete, um, I, I competed once at 17 years old and I was natural when I went in the bodybuilding competition, right? I saw, I mean, I, I was young and I was natural and I went, and this guy was the same weight category as me, right? 
I was like, yeah. where, where did all the veins come from? Why, why does this guy look so different? What the fuck is going on here, man? I was like, something's not right. So, and then after that, I went to experiment heavily into it. And what I realized the difference was, um, even though the results were the same, I mean, you can easily tell now, I mean, the, the way the muscles are engorged, but you don't learn as much because it comes easier. I mean, there's a short, short uh, story form. I, I'm trying to understand, uh, to, 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 to bridge it back to the lie. I mean, why the lie and, and what, what do these people gain? Because, uh, I mean, oh, what... you mean, you mean the 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 globe people? Why yeah. did they, what? They, yeah, I mean... they, they, the only thing they gain is stability over the over society. That's all they gain. But it's not that's not a small thing. We're talking about something. It's a huge piece of. Remember, you know, would you tell people? Let's say, put yourself in their shoes for a second, right? And you're you're a high mucky muck in the Illuminati, right? And all of a sudden, it's like we've heard this. We've seen we've seen this in television and movies and books for years. Which is okay. We have a new piece of information that's really powerful. How can we use it to our advantage? And until we can figure out how to use it to our advantage, we're not telling anybody because it's worth. It's not. You can't even put a price tag on it. It's it's that influential. I mean, you could literally reshape everything in society you know depending on how you you put this out there you could spin it in a different direction you could create something fake to you could create the ultimate control over people the, trust me the think tanks would just be going through the roof on this it's like okay how can we use this to our advantage um there was a line from um oh hell it was from roswell the movie which was great remember this is about the space uh, yeah if you ever get a chance uh check it out roswell is from the early 90s with Martin Sheen and uh, Kyle MacLachlan. Uh, it's on IMDb. You can't miss it. It was a made for TV movie, really worth a watch. And there were towards the end of the movie, you know, you had this joint chiefs of staff meeting where they're talking about this. And it's like, and one of the congressmen, he's like, well, we're going to tell the people, right? And, and the, you know, some of the generals are going, yeah, 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 we'll tell them. We'll tell them when, when we think they're ready to, to know this. And what we're basically we're saying is, can we use this to our advantage? You know, what can we, what can we do with this? You know, does it benefit us? Do it, does it hurt us? The last thing we want to do is we want the, the, the big problem with like just even aliens, for example, is, which is why like the air force, you've seen movies right, or you've seen videos, like the, the things that are flying around, our fighters can't even touch these things. Yeah. Right. Well, if you're the military, you lose credibility. If you admit there's stuff up there, they can't catch. Meaning you, you can't rule, you can't be, you can't rule the skies if you don't rule the skies. Same thing with, um, uh, you know, uh, a, a civilization that's bigger and more powerful than us. Because if you acknowledge that they exist, the government loses face immediately. The government, because people are like, yeah, I don't know if I like following you anymore. I want to hear from those guys up there. I want to hear from the cloud people. And it, they don't like, you know, authority is very, very fickle. People don't, they will, they will, as you know, they will switch allegiances in a heartbeat if they, uh, if they get the wrong message. And so that's, that's why you keep the secret. You don't, you don't want to, you don't want to rock the boat as it were. And they've learned that people in men in power. There's so many sayings here. Men in power rarely give it up voluntarily. And these, you know, you're talking about powerful men, you know, influential people. And it's like, yeah, yeah, let's not wreck this. Let's not, let's not, they don't want to lose the, what they have. It was, it was kind of a cool thing, but, but I think we're ready. I think they've done it now. I mean, it's taken 50 years, 60 years, but think of what they got now. They've got high speed internet, social media, 6 billion smartphones, at least. Um, you can push a narrative now to every country simultaneously and pretty much get what you want. The question is, what's that narrative going to be? I don't know. Because right now, they've just been doing the whole virus BS God, thing. Man. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm sure people, especially the, those who are listening to the show, will fucking kill me, but I still believe that those, I mean, the, the cream of the crop, those who are in power, there's still a tiny bit of good in them, at least. If not, they are not human because I don't see how you can betray your own race. By okay, uh, no, 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 it's good. Okay, here, oh, I will steal a line from Men in Black. Ready? And you know this line. 
a person is good the because that's what that's what will smith asked tommy lee jones in the movie when they were sitting down on the on the bench it was probably the only decent dialogue in the whole movie which was <laughs> it's like why not tell people people are smart right and he goes a person is smart people are dumb panicky and dangerous and you know it right and that it and that is true i mean a person yes the average person has a lot of good in them, but you're not talking about just one person. You're talking about interlocking groups at such a high level with agendas that they can't break out of because if they try, they will be replaced by somebody else. There are people lined up to be in seats of power. And even if you could break out, what are you going to do with it? You know, what do you, and I'm not trying to be a wet blanket when I say that, you know, who, who do you tell exactly? You know, first off, who do you tell? <laughs> what media source are you going to go to? Because they're all compromised at, at this stage. You know, you, you're going to go to CNN, you're going to go to the New York Times, you're going to go to London, you know, go, what, what news service you're going to, you're going to, you're going to go to. Uh, remember the, the space race was, was between the Soviet Union and the Shit. United States, right? And people. People, people came back to me and says, well, wouldn't Russia tell everybody? I go, no, they were in on it. Why would they tell? They'd be telling on themselves. In telling, they say, oh, yeah, the American space program is fake. They would also have to admit that their space program was fake. It's a fucking show. It's, it's, uh, Fuck. it, they, they wouldn't be able to do it. And by the way, the reason why people keep forgetting it, I go, don't you remember? It was a space race, right? Everybody's like, we're, go, we're both racing towards the moon. And then all of a sudden the Americans get there and Russia just quits. They just stop. It's like, and they shut it all down. No one, it, that's not how it would have gone. You know full well, it would have been, they put four people, we put six. They put a small base, we put a bigger base. And then Time Magazine runs its story and says the Cold War has now reached the moon. That's how it would have gone. But no, that's not that's not what we got. The reason why Russia had to quit uh, is because um, of studio discrepancies, meaning two studios can't make the same product, in, especially in different countries, because they would have different production techniques. Meaning if Hollywood's shooting the moon one way and Moscow is shooting it another way, the, it, there is no way in hell they are going to be even close to identical. And the nerds are going to figure that out in two seconds. They're going to be like, yeah, why is that? Why, why do the Russian footage, why does it look so brown? You know, or, or why do they have stars and the Americans don't? I mean, there'd be so many. I mean, we've got, you got to remember that our, especially the United States nerds, they find everything. MovieMistakes.com, right? And all these, if, if a coffee cup moves from here to here in a scene and nobody does it, they'd be like, oh yeah, at this timestamp, no, the coffee cup, this, and, and it happens in movies because the reason why is movies are shot out of sequence. They're, they're just like, okay, we're going to shoot all the bedroom scenes now. We're going to shoot all the desert scenes. We're going to shoot all the car scenes to save money. And the, so mistakes are made all the time. I mean, my, my God, the first Lord of the Rings movie, when they were leaving the Shire, had a car driving in the background. <laughs> The very first one, and they had to re they had to re-release it. They had to edit that out and send a new version to theaters. It's like, what's a car doing there? Of course, everyone was watching The Hobbits. But the point is, is that if you have a, a studio in in Russia and a studio in the United States, they're never going to match up. And so they finally just agreed. It's like, yeah, you know what? Only one can do this. It might as well be the United States because, uh, you know, they they've got more money they can throw at this than the Russians did. Then the Russians just quietly just went away. It's like, what? It's like, that's it? Nobody, nobody, that's all we're going to hear from these guys? All this big space race and arms race? No, no. It's, it's not just this line, the space line, the FE line, but there's so many more lines to be built around that just because of one. Everything, all these lines have, have spun out of control, in my opinion. Everything is just... I mean, it, it's a, sp it's a spider web. Absolutely. Um, the, 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 the saying that we have over here, I think it was a British saying that is, um, oh, the tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive, which is, yeah, when, when you start off with certain lies, you have to create other lies to cover those lies. And then it just gets just, they just get piled on top of each other. And you're absolutely right. I mean, NASA, a great example was it started out small and you know very small budget and it just kept growing and growing in the projects but the problem was the whole premise of nasa was a lot so it, it's like people keep forgetting so, so everything they were building on it they were just building more lines it's like it wasn't just a spacesuit it wasn't just a space shuttle and it wasn't just the moon mission everything 
in fact i made a video on it um called um uh for want of a nail and i basically said okay the you want you want to know how bad the lie is i go every scene where you see a spacesuit is a lie because the space you know suit, name again the what what's the name of the video again oh oh hang on hang on uh for want of a nail hang on uh i'll find it there's mark I see the only way I, I see there's some sort of emancipation for our race, right? It would be would be the, the flat earth to, to just go straight to the fucking com and just go straight to the thing and just build off from there. I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how long yeah, yeah. who, who so, ever thought this would be a good good idea to just keep the line going like that? Eventually it's gonna get found out, right? Right? I mean how like, all right, so here's the here's the video. So Lost Nail. Lost Nail. And and basically what I, what I said was, I it, there, there's an old um, uh, I think it's parable uh, where they it's kind of like even the little things can cascade into bigger things. Uh, the lost nail story is about how um, there was a nail for a horseshoe that you lost, and so the horseshoe wasn't there, which meant the horse wasn't there, which meant the rider wasn't there. So they lost the battle, and then finally lost the war just because of one nail, you know, because of all these little things, the butterfly effect. And the same thing applies with NASA, which is that if the astronaut suit can't work, then everything tied to it doesn't work. It's, it's absolutely, and, and it's true. I mean, the, the, the suit cannot work the way it's supposed to, it cannot happen. But because we, the United States, especially our students, we learn, we're, we learn so little to be willing to get out of school. We learn just enough to get a basic job and drive. <laughs> That's it. We don't know. We don't remember anything about chemistry or physics or biology or engineering or any of that crap. So when, and it was a brilliant idea. In fact, you can look it up. There's, there's the, the early NASA spacesuits were plastic and metal. I mean, they were really, really clunky. And that's because that's the only way you could deal with a vacuum. And then somebody who's brilliant, whoever it is, I hope they died rich and happy because they said, yeah, you know what? Let's just make a soft suit. We'll put it on television. No one knows anything about physics. It'll work. It'll totally work. No one will get it. And because it's on television, even the physics people will be like, well, it's on television. They must have figured something out. They'll just assume that we solved the problem. We don't have to tell them why, how we solved it. We just say we solved it. Kind of like Star Trek. It's like, we got warp speed. How'd you do it? Well, we just did. <laughs> it's like, what? Nobody really explains it. They says, whoa, well, well, we have, tr we have tele transporters. We have warp speed. We have all this other crap. It's just, it's just part of the universe. And they just did it. So yeah, soft suits. And it worked. And so, and, but because of the lie, now everyone has to use soft suits and they have to work the exact same way. Oh, by the way, another thing about soft suits, they don't work, it, it wouldn't be in slow motion, right? That was another thing they did in Capricorn 1, the, the fake Mars movie, which was, you know, they just slowed down the camera speed by 50% and that's how you got this floaty thing. It's like, why would they be floating? They wouldn't be floating. I go, they're not, they're not in water. You see, even if you believe the moon missions, right? The moon was like one sixth earth gravity. So 180 pound man would weigh 30 pounds. He would be moving really, really fast, right? If you had all your muscles, but you only weighed a sixth of what you weighed right now, you could jump really fast, but you're still coming down fast. It would be like, um, oh God, what was that Disney movie? Superman, man. What the right? what? Superman, like he was in... Krypton, right? And then oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't you wouldn't be floating down. In fact, you know, if you drop a hammer, it's not going down slow. The hammer still weighs, you know, what it weighs. It's not going down slow. You're just in fact, all you would be is stronger. Yeah, it would be like a Superman. In fact, that was one of the things I complained about. I go, where are the feats of strength? Right? You have six, you're six times stronger on the moon. You should take that moon buggy with one hand. You should be able to do that. The magnetism of the, the negative magnetism of the earth as well right i mean how different <laughs> whatever i mean the, the the point the point is is that that nothing that we assume the stuff because it's on television it's like oh we're floating in space right you know no no if you're on the moon and you weigh 30 pounds it's still 30 pounds right but it's 30 pounds not floaty 30 pounds you just weigh 30 pounds and so you'd be moving really really fast your arms would weigh 
I mean, you could, you could do things way quicker. You could run faster. You definitely could jump farther. And these guys jumped up, what, maybe 18 inches off the ground? Come on. You would have a ton. You'd be like, dling, dling, dling. You'd be jumping everywhere. You could throw, and they never threw anything. There's other things. It's like, you could throw a ball forever. They, they took golf balls on the moon. How or why, I don't know. I have any freaking idea. It's all sorts of shit. Anyway, the point was, is the lost nail just goes into the logic, which is if the spacesuits are wrong, if the spacesuit is a lie, then everything that you see a spacesuit in is a lie, which is the entire program. Everything's like, every, it's, it's a complete sham. How utter, do you think this utter sham. Would end? The what? How do you think this whole tirade and, and train of lies will, will end? Let's move on to a bit of speculation now. Okay, you want some speculation? Okay. Um, How long can it go on for? You want you want my happy ending? You, uh, so there's two. two it made it worse, these. man. There's there's the um, there's the happy popcorn ending, or there's the award winning tragedy. It's one of the two. Let's, right? let's start happy and 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 uh, give me the, the shit one after that. Okay. Okay. So the happy ending is that we hit critical mass, meaning there are so many people that there's more people that know about flat Earth that don't know about flat Earth. And there's more people that come out, even though it's in quiet, it's quietly in groups and it becomes, uh, what I call the hundredth monkey effect. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a fat, you know, fascinating, you know, the, the whole thing where, where all of a sudden when the hundredth monkey learned how to eat potato, wash the potato in the water, they all learned it. Not just the ones that were on that beach, but all the other beaches that weren't even connected. It was like, there was an update sent to every other monkey. Well, for genetic I think human what do i think human beings could apply to that yeah i do i do think that human beings could to this giant update and then we learn and then there's this enlightenment and then i don't know golden spaceship shows up and it's like you have you have learned oh now you can move on to the next world and we can terraform this and get rid of most of your civilization and leave a few hints here and there and new new freshman class shows up you graduate someone else comes in you don't have to go home but you gotta get the hell out of here and it's great. It's happy ending, music, roll credits. Great. That's the happy ending. The not so happy ending, <laughs> which, which might be what we're in right now, is that uh, they decided at some point that it didn't matter how many, uh, what people knew, we're just going to try to depopulate anyway, because most people just do what they're told. There's two experiments out there um american ones that we learned a long time ago one was the milgram experiment which means that people will do horrible things if they're under orders from somebody else that takes responsibility and the other one's the ash experiment which is basically peer pressure which means that people even though there's lots of individuals out there people want to be special they also don't want to stick out there's a lot of people that just don't want to stick out they just want to don't want to be hassled. And I, we have run into that so many times over here where there's people, a lot of people over here, like, for example, are wearing masks. And you ask them, it's like, why are you wearing masks? It's like, yeah, I just don't want to, I just don't want to catch, catch any crap when I go to the grocery store. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with the conflict. And the rate we're going right now, because we're over here, I don't know what it's like over there. We're pushing the, the, the vax so fast. Yeah. That, uh, you know, we'll, if, if there are side effects, it's going to be too late. And so that's, that's the sad ending if you, if you go down that road. I mean, because over here, we have something called the Georgia Guidestones. And oh, the shit, crowd yeah. is really it's nervous creepy, about that. Because Georgia Guidestones means that 90% of the world population gets taken down. And, and I've always like, okay, where is it? What is it? How do you do it exactly? And, and it's like, it's not like you could get people to just voluntarily do it, right? <laughs> and but at the same time, it's, it's anyway, so that's, that's a sad ending. I don't know. I mean, right now, you know, we, we were doing really, really well, but like in 2020, we had one conference because we just couldn't, you know, we were locked down. We couldn't, we couldn't go anywhere. Couldn't, couldn't even find a venue. Like here's the tough thing for us. Let me end on this or get close to ending on this which is it's, it's a tough time for the conspiracy crowd because most of the conspiracy world over here, especially in the States and the UK and, and, and other English speaking countries is we, we won't take the, the shot and we won't take the test because we, we, for various reasons, either you don't believe in the medical side of things or there's a religious side as well. And so the, the conspiracy world's in a, t in a bind 
right now because all of a sudden it's like you know they're going to be rolling out this second class citizen stuff which says well you know by the way if you don't get the shot you don't get to do other things you will be very very restricted and so they're they're kind of kind of it's, it's a tough time to be a conspiracy person right now hate to say it i think it creates yeah. a, a very healthy cynicism because you, you kind of start to notice other shit as well like the most obvious one is the, the vaccine I, I see no no reason why I, i'm gonna get it. i mean for now anyway so, i would hold off as long as humanly yeah. possible no i mean not like the minorities for example in our in our country um a black community and hispanic community they're waiting and that's that smart move on their part it's like yeah we're gonna let the white people take the shot and see what happens <laughs> wait wait for the white people to do it because seriously white people <laughs> white people walk in there's a there's what's that saying uh angel fools rush in where angels dare to tread white people just just go into it so like, yeah i'll be fine i'll be fine yeah. steve o's will go there first yeah yeah let them yeah let yeah let them walk into the minefield <laughs> see see how it goes and uh so we'll we'll see. I mean, I'm going to hold off as as long as I can, and uh, if I have to move to a commune, we have people that are like leaving cities over here. Some of the conspiracy groups are like leaving cities and going into small pockets in rural areas in in um, not very popular areas. Yeah, how, how are they faring in the small uh, agrarian communities? How are you faring? Yeah, how, how are they faring now? Like moving out. In well, I mean, it's it's working. I mean, the, you know, you can we've got enough resources that that people can, you know, you can make small communities work. And I mean, you're still not gonna you're not gonna be doing all the fun things you used to do because you're out, you know, on a farm community or a uh, a compound. Uh, but from what I understand, they're they're going pretty well. So it's I, I I think it's a bit desperate. We have, but at the same time, the speed of which everything's been escalating here. I mean, uh, and I warned people in a in a video I called um, when a plan comes together uh, on my channel, where I I said, look, this is being rolled out, and it won't take years; it'll take months, you know, maybe fifteen months at the at the outset. But the speed which they're, you know, the the thing they're going to dangle in front of everybody, and it's brilliant, which is you you cut people off from the stuff they love, right? You know, all the sports and the movies and the bars and the restaurants and all the distractions. And you keep them out of it for months, and then you—it's—it's it's straight up interrogation 101. I mean, this is part of the CIA playbook. It's like you, you put pressure, you apply pressure, and then you say, "Oh yeah, yeah, I can make the, all that go away." Yeah, all you have to do is this one little thing right here. That's it. It'll make it all go away. And I mean, that's you—you see this, right? It's it, and it's like, yeah, yeah. I, at that point, people will do anything. It's like that's all I have to do. That's all I have to do is take the shot. Give me the freaking shot. Li I will line up for the freaking shot. And they will. I mean, people are, are people are getting angry here because we're we're releasing it by age. So we're only giving it to people right now. I think, um, yeah, fifty and higher or sixty and higher. And by the time you know we get down to forty and thirty and twenty, and and then finally the the students. Oh yeah, it, people are lining up out. Of, there's so many centers to get them at, and you know there's still people. They're trying to sneak in. It's like oh, you know, pay, bribing people to get their shots. It's like yeah. Yeah, you have no idea what's going. No one questions the fact that all these pharmaceutical companies came out simultaneously with the same answer. No one questions that they're interchangeable. It's like so you can take one, you can take the first shot from Pfizer, the second one from AstraZeneca, or the Johnson and Johnson. You can you can mix and match. I have never seen that before in the history of pharmaceuticals, <clears throat> with the exception of like over the counter like aspirin type stuff. It's like oh yeah, but even then they don't recommend it. Oh god. You know, yeah, so we'll uh, we'll see. It's it's, it's a wild. Yeah, a there's, there's, what, there's, an old, there, there's, there's an old Chinese saying, which I think you know, if you want a silver lining, um, which is may you live in interesting times. And it doesn't get more interesting than this. So you know, I played quite a bit of video games, right? And I realized this: the, the only value I get out of video games is that this this whole life thing feels like a game itself. I think yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the most okay, yeah. uh, the, the most um. Mm -hmm. Okay, tragic ending. I can never think of the, end, the craziest one, right? Would be those who survive this in in a way, uh, uh, graduate this school, so to speak, right? Will be one to yeah. take over the fucking Illuminati, right? So those are smart take over, and then those who are already in power will um, will graduate outside the the firmament or something like that. I mean, that would be the, the craziest 
story that I can I can think of. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's good. And and yeah, I by the way, I do believe in simulation theory. I have to, I'm you know, I'm a lifelong gamer. I used to play professionally. Wow. And this is a this has so many earmarks of a game that uh but this, the problem is is that mo the average person on the street doesn't understand it. Remember the Matrix? That's 20 22 years old now the matrix right no one got it it was like they it's like wow it's a really good movie do you understand it not really (laughs) okay (laughs) you know in or the 13th floor they don't understand simulations or virtual reality they kind of understand it but they don't really understand it so when like when i go into the whole flat earth thing i would i would love to tell people about simulation I, i i i start with it's like if it's flat and it's enclosed it's probably virtual just so you know but people don't get that so, because remember, all simulations are flat and enclosed. In fact, they're they're not even a um a, they're not even domed. It's a box. Sandbox moon. What? Sandbox moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it, yeah. It's so, but but people don't get it. So I have to start with the most basic thing. It's like it's flat. Oh, okay, that's good. That's great. Well, so- we'll, <laughs> we'll go from there. Um, but, but I've had other people say, well, you know, do you think it's virtual? Yeah. Between the double slit experiments, um, the, uh, neuroscience, neuroscience versus free will experiment. Uh, we see it all the time. We see coding issues where if the, the movie, the movie, the 13th floor was not wrong in that we see issues here in this world that we are doing in simulations, especially graphically. Um, the double slit experiment, that's all it is, which means whatever's behind you right now is not being rendered completely. It's only mostly being rendered because you're not looking at it. And and it's like, well, is that true? It's like, yeah, it's absolutely true. We've tested it many, many times. It's like, because we had cameras on stuff, and, you know, we, we could see the, the test pattern. And it's like, and, and if you're not looking at it, the test pattern is one way. If you're looking at it, the test pattern is a different way. It's like, what the hell? It's, and we didn't understand that for years. This was way be- even before computers. We were just shooting electrons. And then all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute. We're doing this in, v- in video games. We're building that same sort of thing. Because when you're building a game, a simulation, do you draw what's on the other side of that mountain over there if your character is never going to the other side of the mountain? No. Why would you? It's a waste of resources. Your character's never going over there. You just make it half a mountain. He's not going to see anything. It's like the the old Hollywood jokes where you'd have the front of a Western town, but there's nothing behind it. It's like, you know, there's just the, the front, the face of the stores, but there's, there's no depth to it. And so why is that happening here? Or one more, sorry, let me leave you with one more thing, which is if you have a, get a chance, look up neuroscience versus free will. That's where it gets creepy. So it's it's in um it's in wiki neuroscience versus versus free will. Is there a movie or video on them? A video on neuroscience versus free will. Yeah, I do better. No, it's not. Videos. No, it's a, it's no, it's just a it's a science experiment. Okay. So yeah. what it is is they the, is they hooked up electrons <laughs> to people's heads, of course, and then they had start hitting. It's like okay, think of a number and then hit that number on a keyboard, and we will record different things, right? So. But what was interesting was, and they said, okay, note, you know, the computer will record when you hit the button, but you note also in the corner when you thought about the number, right? So you think of the number three right now, pick a number between one and 10, right? Think of number three. And the second you, you think of that number, you note the time. Here's where it gets weird. The computer sees that you chose the number eight seconds ago. That's a problem. Because you just thought about it. You can't, it can't exist before you thought about it, right? Can't, unless it's predestination, which means that you may not even be living in a virtual reality. You may be living in a virtual movie, meaning you made all the decisions before you even got in here in advance. And there's a lag that we can actually pick up on. Because eight seconds is a long time, my man, <laughs> a long time. And so it's like, no, I just thought of the number nine. It's like, no, you didn't. The computer saw it eight seconds ago. And scientists hate this. What? So that would only elude to the fact, or at least a postulation that we, that there was a decision, individual decision on our part to be here. 
to be on, in this sandbox that we procedurally generated this new campaign and okay fucking let's go and play man let's see let's see what's going to come out of it uh so it, it, so it, think, think about this I, I here let me let me challenge that with this the, here's here's the equivalent do you ever watch videos on youtube because <laughs> kids are so lazy nowadays that they don't even play their own video games they just watch videos of other people playing video games right it's like drives me nuts it's like why are you watching this it's like because it's easier i don't have to play it it's like really <laughs> it's like you're, just, you're gonna watch the guy playing it yeah. well the, what what you're what's interesting about that is those think of what you're watching though you're watching a movie which is taking up very little bandwidth but you're learning all about the game and it's not in real time it's using almost no resources whatsoever apply this to this world so think about this i'll, I'll give you a, a hollywood example you are a director of a movie, right? You're going to make a movie. You have complete creative control. You, cre you pick the actors, the music, the cinematography, the whole nine yards. You make the movie, and then a week before it's going to premiere, you get in a car wreck, you bump your head, and you have amnesia, mm -hmm. right? So, but you go to the premiere anyway. It's like, he'll make them happy. Bring him to the premiere, right? So you go to the premiere, and you're watching the movie. To everybody else... It's just a movie, but to you, it's the greatest movie ever. Why? Because every choice in that movie you made, and it's like, wow, I am totally getting this. Like, that's the that's the music I would have used. I would have used that actor. That's a great script. It would have absolutely been perfect. All you had to do was have your memory blocked a little bit. So think about it. You before you come in, and we'll do a hypothetical. Ready? Here's yeah, speculation. I know. Here's your happy ending. Before you come into this world, <laughs> you make this, you lay out the big plot points ahead of time. It's like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And by the time, you know, up and down and up and down, hero's journey type of thing. By the time I get here, I'm awoken, I'm doing, I've accomplished what I wanted to, right? And then once you made all those choices, you block the memory. So that you never made, you know, you have no idea what you were, what you were getting into, because then it seems like it's a perfectly natural thing that you're going into, but it uses way less resources. And then I know, then I know your head's going to explode, but then it gets into the bigger question of, okay, how many people are here are actually even real? Uh -huh. I always thought about them. Like, who, what real NPCs? Are <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, 90% of the people, and I'm not kidding here. I, I, I have done theory on this for years. 90% of the people walking around are NPCs. At least 90%. 90% are just freaking zombies. They're just shadows. They aren't doing anything. And that should make sense. I'm sure you've seen a whole bunch of them. They're just walking around. You're looking at them. It's like, there's nothing going on in this guy's head. That girl has no clue what's going on. They're just going through their lives. And that makes sense because, look, I'm from the video game world. I produced some of these things. I knew how the evolution. Before NPCs were created, they used to be just notes on trees or a note in a bottle. It's just a, a clue to let you know what was going to go next, right? And then after a while, it's like, yeah, you know, we've got the resources. But instead of making a note on a tree, let's turn it into a guy that you can ask questions. And then after a while, it's like, yeah, but that guy can't lean next to the tree all the time. Let's have him walking around. And then eventually you give him a whole social life and you give him all these things to do. It's like, you got to track the guy down and maybe here, maybe, maybe he's got a family. You don't know. He's got a home the whole nine yards. We build huge things for NPCs right now. Uh, it worked a huge army of NPCs. Yeah, there's a lot out there. So don't worry about it too much. Do, the, the last thing, last thing I want, then I got to go. Yeah. Which is, um, if you ever get the chance, watch the end of Vanilla Sky again, if you don't remember that movie. Vanilla Sky was a Tom Cruise movie, uh, and it turned out, by the time you got to the end of it, you realized it was a virtual reality movie. It started out as a... It for me, man. Well, no, I'm not. No, it's not. A spoiler. No, no, you want to know this. It, it makes okay. more sense at the end. But there's okay, this okay. line. there's this line at the end where... Where all of a sudden Tom Cruise is confronting one of the NPCs played by Kurt Russell, huh. and uh, and the tech support guy is standing next to Tom Cruise, and and uh, and Tom Cruise he's, he's like he's not real. It's like no, he's not real. And he's like he goes, I am too real. He's going, I'm a psychiatrist. I have two daughters, right? He goes, you know that, right? And and the the tech guy goes, really? What are their names? And he freezes. He doesn't know what to do. And he's like. 
I'm real. I'm real. And, and he's stuck. And again, that's look, there's people out there. I've given tests to people on my own. <laughs> they are, there's there. It is 90% NPCs out there. Guarantee it. So, I need to test this thing myself. You need, you need to send me some uh, template for test. I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going okay. to ask people the questions. Okay. Remind, well, remind me in an email and I'll send it to you. In fact, I boiled it down to um, five. Five questions. Look, look up something called the um, the Turing test if you get a chance. You heard it before. T U R I N G test. Yeah, T U R I N G test. Um, initially based off a guy um, Alan, Turing. Alan, Alan Turing. He was a British code breaker. One of the or he was basically the father of computers. Not never gets any credit because he was secret. He was the guy that broke the Nazi uh, codes in the in World War II. And they kept his secret. They, they never, I mean, he wasn't even revealed for, for years later that he had anything to do with it. He was one of those super, super nerd social problems. But he believed, he, he saw down the future, he's going, yeah, eventually we're going to come up with computers that are going to be difficult to distinguish from real people. So he developed the, the raw version of the, the Turing test, which is, they still give it to computers now. That's like the big challenge in, in the nerd world where you, where you give a computer questions and, you know, behind a blind thing and you don't know. And of course, because we can't get the voices right, it's got to be text. You, you give computer questions and you have to determine whether you're talking to a computer or a person. It's so creepy. Yeah, it's kind of, that's the, which was the, the theme of uh, Blade Runner, the beginning of Blade Runner, where he asked like <sighs> 200 questions, right? And it's like, no, no, no. And I boiled it down to five. I could do it in five. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give them to you later. Okay, so one last question. Uh, what yeah. video game company do you work for? And what games have you produced? I've been, we, we can, recently, yeah, I've, yeah. Yeah, I've been so, playing uh, Valheim, um, but I've got a bit of my eyes on uh, Baldur's Gate 3 because I, I love RPG games. So uh, I was, well, the, the game, well, I started out ooh, back in the back in the old days. I mean, I knew the Blizzard guys back when it was warcraft one when they only had one oh, shit, no, man. War, um and then so i worked for a little company called star play and we made um pinball games from a, a developer out in tokyo crystal caliburn and looney labyrinth and stuff like that and then we bundled with all and then we did um uh, alley 19 bowling and shadow wraith and little things but anyway the point was is that we were we were in the infancy of the games and so i loved Basically, I, I was devoted. Anything that Blizzard put out, I played. Loved it all oh. to death. Loved Blizzard so much. I just gave up Warcraft just now, or just last year, um, because of the whole, um, because they, they did a level squish, finally. You know, they went from level 120. They should have stopped at 100, but I know the money was too much. And I've been playing Diablo 3. I know they're going to remaster Diablo 2. I don't know if they'll ever get to Diablo 4. Um my but i used to say that if warcraft was my wife fallout 3 was my mistress because fallout 3 i thought was beautiful i thought it was gorgeous i, like it was, I, think, I thought fallout 2 was the best fallout 2 was good yeah, fallout good. 2 was good but fallout 3 was was devastating i mean it was it was so bleak it was just, it was fantastic but I, like my guilt i'll give you this my two guilty pleasure games stupid games but i play them bejeweled 3 what the fuck I really I had a very good impression of you. I said, sorry, man. But Jewel 3, I still I still love this day. And Plants vs. Zombies. What the fuck? I still think, I still think those are great games. Well, because they're, they're fun, simple, dumb games. Anyway. So, I'm, I'm very disappointed that you didn't include Path of Exile. In, let, let me introduce you to Path of Exile. Which one? Path of Exile. Yeah, well, again, there's only so many games that you can play. I remember, you know, if, I, if I'm playing Warcraft all the time, and if I'm not playing Warcraft, I'm playing Starcraft or Diablo, I mean, how many hours in the day do I have? I mean, we'll, we'll give you, for example, you don't, don't, don't forget that when World of Warcraft came out, that's when EverQuest 2 came out. And people were like, oh, we'll just split the time, right? Nobody split the time. Everyone went to Warcraft, even though EverQuest 2 was great because there wasn't enough time in the day. Uh, so, I mean, I was supposed to run, I, in fact, not only that, I was supposed to run a horde. No, I was supposed to run the Alliance side of our guild and everyone played horde and they didn't spend any time in the Alliance. 
So I was like stuck. So I had to go off to another server and do my own thing. Anyway, by the way, I will. Here's my um my uh, claim to fame. If you know World of Warcraft, I actually have a server first. I got a. Uh, what what read was that? What were doing with it? I got I got server first uh, skinning on uh, Pandaria by myself without a oh, guild. You, you bought Pandaria. Okay. Real, realm first. So wow. was, yeah, that's tough to do. That's how that's how dedicated. I mean, I got the beta. I knew exactly what I was gonna do, and you know, got up in the middle of the night when the release came out, and and, and of course the suck part was, you know, because when you get it, the whole realm loads. It's like realm first skinning, Merc Sergeant, and people just swearing at me. It's like motherfucker, piece of shit. <laughs> if they only knew that you were fat, I think they hate you more. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway. hey, th thanks for the interview. And, um, the Flat maybe, Earth Sun yeah, and Moon what, what Clock app. Produced, A dynamic the, uh, new company. app to teach family oh, yeah, and friends about Star where they Play. actually live. Anymore, build, well, the sky is a perfect clock. S -S the sun measures the hours and days. You might find the moon measures the weeks and months. To them out there. The but star constellations measure the seasons I mean, and I mean, years. I played, I was 12, with them 12, from or 24 hour clock face or go hands free. The Flat Earth Sun, Moon and Zodiac Clock app. With new edit features. And now you're, you're working in world time. Producing See what time no, it is all no, no, around no, the no. Then I taught proprietary a software. True Earth Compass years. that shows was, true navigation time across and, and around the flat software. Earth plane. And then time weather. Have for detailed uh, local weather attendance. information. And then know what phase and where the moon that, is at all times. That's all. I'm doing. Watch the sun travel between the tropics for the seasons. Select an amazing background. Add your own, or have the app change it to a new one automatically every time you use the app. Add a countdown to your next big day. Learn the truth about our world with the featured video of the day. That's all I do. Web button for additional so, flat Earth related features. So, uh, From the mythical curve video. calculator the, uh, all the way to Tartaria. The title of this, uh, video playlists in different Mount languages. Plays, and See the real trade wheel circling uh, the flat Earth. And, and clean screen features. <laughs> Thanks, man. Simply click Appreciate off the that. items you By don't the way, wish to Jewel 3 is not a bad game. It's, the Flat Earth, cool Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app know, is the best tool to show your friends and strangers how our flat Earth actually works. You never play. Like, like, I never play phone games. I only play PC games. Uh, I don't play console, really. Well, not anymore. I had a Super Nintendo back in the day. Okay. Uh, thank right, you. Hopefully we do this again. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just let me know if you need anything.